My dear friends, if you have heard about this category of investment products called ULIPs, then chances are that you wouldn't have heard anything great about them. And rightly so, because this is a category of investment products that over the years has become infamous for egregiously high charges and very, very poor returns. But what if I told you that there exists a category of ULIPs where expenses and costs are pretty much at par with mutual funds, but the tax efficiency is many, many orders superior to any other category of equity instruments, be it mutual funds, ETFs, or even direct stocks. The only problem with these ULIPs is that they are so low on costs and so low on the brokerage that they pay to the intermediaries who distribute them that no agent or bank really wants to distribute them. And that's probably the reason you would not have heard about these category of ULIPs. But don't worry, my dear friends, in this video, we are going to discuss in very many details about this very hidden gem. Hi, welcome to the part four of this series, which is also the concluding part of this series where we are discussing techniques through which we can invest for a financial goal that is due in, let's say, four to five years from now in such a way such that we can end up with at least a low double digit return, 11 to 12 percent per annum at the end of a five year SIP, even if market conditions turn out to be not very favorable during the course of the five-year SIP. By the way, the first set of jackets and shirts that I ordered at the prodding of some of my viewers has just arrived. Many of my viewers, like this one, really thought that the blue shirt and the blue jacket I have been sporting in my many of my previous videos is now getting really, really repetitive and that it was time for a wardrobe upgrade. So this comment was left by my viewer Rohit Agarwal. Rohit, this one is for you. My new red jacket and the white shirt is dedicated to you. Now coming back to what we are discussing in this series. In part one of this series, we discuss some of the fatal flaws of a conventional SIP based investment approach, which can have grave implications, especially if the purpose of the SIP is to save up for a financial goal that is due in, let's say, four to five years from now. We saw in part one of this series that the performance of a five year SIP almost entirely depends on market conditions during the course of your SIP. If market conditions are very favorable during the course of your SIP, if markets are witness to very strong rallies during the course of your SIP, then you can end up with returns as spectacular as 45% per annum at the end of your five-year SIP. However, if you are unlucky and markets are witness to a large market correction during the course of your SIP, especially if such a correction comes closer towards the end of your SIP, then you can also end up with negative returns. And that would almost certainly mean that you will fall short of the amount that you are targeting to save up by the end of your five year SIP. In effect, you will fail to achieve the financial goal for which you are investing. But is there a solution to this problem? Is there a way to invest for a financial goal in such a way such that we can end up with at least a low double digit return, 11 to 12 percent per annum at the end of a five year SIP, irrespective of how market conditions turn out to be during the course of the SIP? I tried to explore a solution to this very problem in part two and three of this series. If you haven't had a chance to go through part two and three of this series, I strongly urge you to go back and have a look at both these videos. I have left a link of both these two videos in the description of this particular video. To quickly recap, in part two and three of this series, we discussed a very unique investment strategy to time your SIPs based on two market timing variables. First, the prevailing PE ratio, price to earnings ratio of the Nifty 50 index. And secondly, the rate of change of Fed's balance sheet size, the US Federal Reserve's balance sheet size. What exactly was this market timing logic that we discussed in part two and three of this series? Well, this is what I had proposed. I had proposed that on the first trading day of every month during the course of your five year SIP, on the day when you're doing your SIP investment, you first go and check what is the current size of the Fed's balance sheet size. And then you also check by how much has the Fed's balance sheet size gone up or gone down by over the last one year. And if it turns out that the Fed's balance sheet size has gone up by 25% or more than 25% over the last one year, then that according to me is a sufficient condition to conclude that Fed is pumping liquidity into the US financial system and 
the global financial system at a very very aggressive pace and historically we have seen that equities tend to do very well under such circumstances and hence under these set of circumstances my suggestion was that we should go to 100% equity allocation in our investment portfolio for that particular month. But if it turns out that the Fed's balance sheet size has gone up but by less than 25% or has not gone up at all or still worse has in fact gone down over the last one year in that case i had proposed that the equity allocation of the investment portfolio for that particular bond should be decided based on a rule linked to the prevailing p ratio of the nifty this is a rule that we discussed in part two of this series and what was this p based rule well as per this p based rule higher the prevailing p ratio of the nifty lower should be the equity allocation in your investment portfolio so for example in any particular month if if the prevailing p ratio of the nifty turns out to be 28 or more than 28 then i had proposed that for that particular month you should reduce the equity allocation in your investment portfolio to zero percent you should move your entire investment portfolio to a liquid fund for that particular month and as the prevailing p ratio of the nifty starts to drop you can gradually increase the equity allocation of your portfolio and as and when the prevailing p ratio of the nifty drops to 15 or or less than or less than 15 you can go to 100% equity allocation in your investment portfolio for that particular month now this was of course a very very quick summary of the strategy if you are not really familiar with what exactly is the p ratio of the nifty or if you are not familiar with what exactly is the fed or the fed's balance sheet size then i once again urge you to go back and have a look at part 2 and 3 of this series links to both these two videos can be found in the description of this particular video now let's quickly go through the historical performance of this new market timing logic that I just summarized for you. Well, this has been the historical performance of a conventional five-year SIP in the Nifty. We saw this chart a little while back. Historically, the best case outcome of a five-year SIP in the Nifty so far has been 45% per annum. The worst case outcome so far has been negative 5.82% per annum. Now let's take a look at what has been the historical performance of this of this new strategy that I just summarized for you where we introduce an element of market timing based on two market timing variables P ratio of the nifty and rate of change of the feds balance sheet size. This has been the historical performance of this new strategy that I just summarized for you. The best case outcome of this strategy so far has been 39. 26% per annum. In case of a conventional 5-year SIP, it was 45% per annum. So, the best case outcome has in fact come down by about 6 percentage points. But look at the worst case outcome. The worst case outcome of this strategy so far has been 6.37% per annum. In case of a conventional 5-year SIP, it used to be negative 5.82% per annum. So the worst case outcome improves by more than 12 percentage points as a result of applying this market timing logic. What does this effectively mean? If this effectively means that by applying this market timing logic, if the markets would, if the Nifty would have delivered very good returns during the course of your five-year SIP, you would have ended up with returns as high as 39% per annum. But even if the Nifty would not have delivered very good returns during the course of your five-year SIP, probably because the Nifty would have encountered a large market correction during the course of your five-year SIP, even in that case, this strategy would have ensured that you would have ended your five-year SIP with a return as high as 6.37% per annum. 6.37 percent per annum by the way is pretty much the return that you can expect from a bank fixed deposit so you get to keep the upside if the nifty delivers very good returns during the course of your five-year sip but at the same time you also enjoy the downside protection comparable to that of a bank fixed deposit in the event that nifty encounters a large market correction during the course of your five-year sip not just that even the median case outcome improves to 16.06 percent per annum in case of a conventional five-year sip the median case outcome so far has been 12.61 percent per annum so even the median case outcome improves by 3.5 percentage points as a result of applying this market timing logic now if you're not familiar with what exactly is median and how does the median differ from average then this is something that i have already covered in part three of this series i'll urge you to go and have a look at this 
थ्री मिनट क्लिप फ्रॉम पार्ट थ्री ऑफ दिस सीरीज स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द टाइम लाइन ट्वेंटी फाइव मिनट्स थर्टी वन सेकेंड्स नाउ दिस वॉट यू गेट वेन यू अप्लाई दिस टू वेरिएबल मार्केट टाइमिंग लॉजिक टू द निफ्टी कैन वी डू बेटर दैन दिस ऑफकोर्स वी कैन वी सॉ इन पार्ट थ्री ऑफ दिस सीरीज दैट वेन यू अप्लाई दिस टू वेरिएबल मार्केट टाइमिंग लॉजिक टू अ टॉप रेटेड एक्टिवली मैनेज लार्ज कैप फंड इंस्टेड ऑफ द निफ्टी दैन द रिजल्ट कैन बी इवन मोर इम्प्रेसिव सो दिस इज द हिस्टोरिकल परफॉर्मेंस of the strategy when you apply this logic to a actively managed large cap fund and the large cap fund that i have selected for the sake of this illustration is hdfc top 100 fund i have picked up the regular version now i am not trying to endorse this fund the only reason that i have picked up this fund is because i was looking for a fund which has publicly available nav going all the way back to january 2001 and the second reason that i picked up this fund is because i was looking for a highly rated large cap fund because nifty is after all a large cap index and i needed a actively managed fund which is somewhat comparable in its composition to the nifty and this is the historical performance of a five year sip if you would have applied the two variable market timing logic to hdfc top 100 fund the best case outcome would have been as high as 58% per annum even the worst case outcome so far would have been 6.9% per annum the median case outcome also would have been as high as 18.63% per annum now the improvement in outcome of a five year sip when you apply this two variable market timing logic is truly remarkable however when you get down to executing this strategy on the ground using a top rated actively managed fund such as the hdfc top 100 fund you will find that you face two key operational challenges because of which the execution of this strategy is rendered practically infeasible what are these two challenges well the first challenge is exit load well hdfc top 100 fund like vast majority of actively managed funds in our country levy a 1% exit load when you switch out or redeem your investments in less than one year's time now in case of the strategy that we discussed we have to rebalance our portfolio every month between an equity fund and a liquid fund and when you rebalance every month you are likely to incur this 1% exit load every month which in turn would mean that a good part of the gains generated from this strategy would be lost to these charges which are incurred as a result of exit load the second challenge that you will face while executing this strategy will be with respect to taxation well when you switch between an equity fund and a liquid fund that is likely to lead to capital gains in fact when you rebalance your portfolio every month most of the gains are likely to be short term gains as we know the finance minister in her most recent budget has increased the tax rates on both short term capital gains as well as long term capital gains in fact the tax rates on short term capital gains have been increased very very substantially and that is going to mean that the taxation impact of the monthly rebalancing that you do with your portfolio as part of this two variable market timing logic is likely to be very very substantial and that is also likely to eat away a substantial part of the gains generated as part of this strategy so is there a solution well the solution lies in looking for an instrument an investment option where there are no exit loads when you switch between funds as per the two variable market timing logic and secondly and more importantly there is no incidence of capital gains when you switch between funds as per the two variable market timing logic but that's a tough ask do we really have a product do we really have any instrument which uh, can meet these two conditions well we do and that product is called ulip ulip stands for unit link insurance plan ulip is a very unique investment instrument however it imposes one restriction on investors which does not exist in case of mutual funds and that restriction is that when you invest in a ulip scheme the investment is subject to a lock in of 5 years which basically means that you will not be able to stop your sips or exit the investment for a period of 5 years a lot of retail investors consider this lock in to be an in impediment however i consider this lock in to be a plus because it enforces a discipline on investors to stay invested for a period of at least 5 years and what is even more important is that in lieu of this 5 year lock in there are two very important advantages that ulips enjoy which do not exist in case of mutual funds firstly there are no exit loads when you switch between ulip funds 
In fact, there are many ULIP schemes available out there in the market where the ULIP companies allow unlimited number of switches in a year, which effectively means that you can choose to switch between funds every single trading day of the year and yet there won't be any charges as on account of exit load. And the second advantage that ULIPs enjoy is that as per current tax laws, when you switch between ULIP funds, that doesn't lead to incidence of any capital gains. But that is not to say that ULIPs do not have their fair share of serious problems. Far from it, ULIPs have many, many serious problems. In fact, those of you who might have heard about ULIPs might be wondering as to why I am trying to promote a product like ULIP which carries such bad reputation on account of rampant mis-selling and egregiously high charges because of which historically investors who have invested in this product have almost always ended up with very very poor returns. So let's look at these issues one by one. Let's first try to understand what are these serious problems that have historically plagued ULIPs. And then let's try to understand why is it that I'm trying to talk rather favorably about ULIPs despite these serious historical problems of ULIPs. Well, to understand the key problems that have plagued ULIPs historically, we need to understand the cost structure of ULIPs. We need to understand the typical charges that ULIP schemes levy on investors. Now, there are three sets of charges that investors have to contend with when they invest in a ULIP scheme. The first set of charges is what are called allocation charges. The second one is what are called mortality charges and third and the final set of charges are what are called fund management charges. Let's look at these charges one by one. Now the first set of charges that investors have to contend with when they invest in ULIP schemes is what are called allocation charges and this according to me is probably the most problematic of the three. So what are these allocation charges? The allocation charges are basically the equivalent of what used to be entry load in case of mutual funds. Now, many many years back mutual fund companies used to apply what are called entry load at the time of investment. If let's say a mutual fund scheme applies an entry load of 1% of the investment amount then basically what would happen is that if you invest 100 rupees 1 rupee would be deducted as part of entry load and only 99 rupees would get invested. SEBI however banned entry load back in august of 2009 that's more than that's about 15 years back however entry loads continue to persist in case of the ulip industry and they go by the name of allocation charges in the ulip industry not only that the quantum of the allocation charges that the ulip industry typically applies on its various ulip schemes is truly egregious most ulip schemes have allocation charges of anywhere between 6% to 12% of the investment amount, which basically means that if there's a ULIP scheme that applies an allocation charge of 6%, then upfront 6% of the investment amount would be deducted. If you invest 100 rupees, 6 rupees would be deducted upfront as part of allocation charges and only 94 rupees would get invested. Let's move to the next set of charges, which is called mortality charges. What are mortality charges? Well, ULIP is a hybrid investment option. There is an investment component in ULIP, there is an insurance component in ULIP. When you invest in a ULIP scheme, you automatically get an insurance cover equivalent to 10 times of your annual investment amount. What do I mean by that? Let me explain that with an example. Let's say you are investing 20,000 rupees every month in a ULIP scheme. In this case, your annual investment amount is 20,000 into 12, 2.4 lakhs. So, in case of this particular ULIP investment, you automatically get an insurance cover of 10 times of your annual investment amount, which is 2.4 lakhs, 10 times of that is 24 lakhs. So this ULIP scheme automatically comes with a 24 lakh rupee insurance cover. And what is the amount of insurance premium that you pay for this 24 lakh rupee insurance cover? Well, that depends on the age of the insured person. If the insured person is a relatively older person, then the premium payable to pay, premium payable for the 24 lakh rupee insurance cover would be relatively high if the insured person is a relatively younger person then the insurance premium payable for the 24 lakh rupee insurance cover would be relatively low now the way this works is that the premium payable for the insurance cover first gets deducted from the amount that you are investing in the ulip scheme and whatever is left after deducting the insurance premium payable for the insurance cover is what gets actually invested in your name. And the third set of charges that you incur when you invest in a ULIP scheme is what are called 
fund management charges. These are charges which are incurred by the ULIP company in order to run these ULIP schemes. So in order to run the ULIP scheme, ULIP companies have to typically maintain an office, have to maintain support staff, they also have to hire fund managers and the expenses that are incurred by the ULIP companies on account of these costs are actually passed on to you in the form of fund management charges. Fund management charges are applicable in case of mutual funds as well. But the first two charges, allocation charges and mortality charges, these two are not there in case of mutual funds. And to what extent do these charges impact the final return that accrues to investors? Well, for that, we are going to look at the actual policy statement of one of our clients to understand what is the quantum of these charges and to what extent they dent the final return that accrues to investors of these ULIP policies. This is the statement of a ULIP policy that was bought by one of our clients, Mr. Govind, from an agent in Delhi. Now, Govind sir is a senior citizen. He's already in his 70s now. He's based in Delhi and he didn't buy this policy from us. He bought this policy before he met us from an agent locally in Delhi. I'm going to tell you what are the problematic things about this policy. Now, I know that the text size is very, very small, but don't worry, I'm going to read out the details for you. Now, this is a policy in which Govind sir is going to invest 2 lakh rupees per year for a period of 5 years. The first thing problemat that is problematic about this policy is that in this policy, his agent advised him to have his wife, Anuradha ma'am, as the insured person in the policy. Now, in case of ULIP plans, you can have yourself as the insured person in the policy, at the, but you can also choose to have your spouse or children as the insured person in the policy. In, in the case of this policy, his agent advised him to have his wife as the insured person in the policy. Now, his, his wife is born in 1953. She was already 69 years old when this policy was sold to Govind sir. And I'm going to tell you the impact of that on this policy in terms of mortality charges in just a while. But let me first deal with the most problematic part of this policy, which is allocation charges. As I mentioned to you, in this policy, Govind sir will be investing 2 lakh rupees per year for a period of 5 years. So, invested 2 lakh upfront at the start of the policy. Now, look at this column. The header of this column reads allocation rate and the allocation rate applicable in case of this policy is 94%. What does that mean? It means that only 94% of what he invested is going to be actually invested in his name. So, what actually got invested was only 1,88,000. 6% gone on day one. This is what allocation charges does to you. 12,000 rupees deducted as charges on day one of the policy. To the, so, out of every 100 rupees that you have invested, 6 rupees is taken away. You are all down to 94 on day one. Now, let's look at mortality charges. This is a policy in which Govind sir is investing 2 lakh rupees per year. So, by definition, this policy comes with an insurance cover of 10 times of this amount, which is 20 lakh rupees. Now, the, the mortality charges that is going to be deducted for this 20 lakh rupees cover is going to be basis what is going to be applicable for a 69 year old person because the insured person in this policy is Govind sir's wife, Anuradha ma'am, who was 69 years old at the time this policy was sold to Govind sir. Look at the policy quantum of mortality charges being charged to her about 2011 rupees per month this is what is getting deducted from the policy to pay for the insurance cover that comes as part of this policy what is the cumulative impact of all these charges well the allocation charges takes away as i said six percent of the investment amount that's 12,000 rupees out of two lakh rupees six percent of 2 lakh rupees comes to 12,000. So, 12,000 gone in allocation charges. What is the total quantum of mortality charges? Well, she's in the, as part of this policy, almost 2,000 rupees is getting deducted every month towards mortality charges. 2,000 into 12 months, that comes to about 24,000. And on this 24,000, you also have to pay GST. That comes to another 4,320 rupees for the entire year. Total more than 40,000 rupees gets deducted between allocation charges, mortality charges and GST on mortality charges. 40,000 out of an investment amount of 2 lakh rupees. More than 20% of what 
he invested is gone in charges every out of every 100 rupees invested 20 rupees gone in charges only 80 rupees gets actually invested this 80 rupees has to grow by 25 percent first for you to get back your principal let alone generating a return is going to be arduous to even get back your principal in a policy like this my dear friends this is the kind of rampant mis-selling that has happened with traditional ulips around the country and that is the reason why hardly anyone who has been coaxed into investing in these traditional ulips has ever been able to make any kind of decent returns on their investments but as the saying goes you can fool all people some of the time or you can fool some people all the time but you cannot fool all people all the time. And this is the moment of reckoning that is now playing out for ULIP companies. Because of rising popularity and awareness about mutual funds, ULIP investors are waking up to the fact that they do not necessarily have to contend with these very, very high charges that ULIP companies have historically levied upon them because there is a lower cost option available to them in the form of mutual funds. As ULIP investors have become increasingly aware about mutual fund options over the last few years because of innovative campaigns such as mutual fund Achhe Hai, ULIP companies have ceded copious amount of amounts of market share to mutual fund companies and this is what is now forcing these ULIP companies to course correct. And it is because of this significant loss of market share that ULIP companies are also increasingly realizing that unless they come up with lower cost ULIP schemes where the cost structure is comparable to that of mutual funds, this market share bleed in favor of mutual funds is not going to stop anytime soon. And the result of that realization is this new breed of super low cost ULIPs called zero allocation charge ULIPs. As the name itself suggests, these zero allocation charge ULIPs do not charge any allocation charges to their investors. As I had explained a little while back, allocation charges constitute probably the most problematic of the three sets of charges that are applied by ULIP schemes onto their investors. And in case of these zero allocation charge ULIPs, these allocation charges are now completely gone. Now these zero allocation charge ULIPs opens up new exciting opportunities for us to be able to execute the monthly rebalancing strategy that we discussed earlier in this video a lot more efficiently compared to what is otherwise possible while executing the strategy using mutual funds, ETFs and stocks. And that is so because when you execute the monthly rebalancing logic using these zero, zero allocation charge ULIPs, you can completely avoid the exit loads that apply when you execute the monthly rebalancing logic using mutual funds. More importantly, you can completely avoid all the short-term capital gains that arise when you churn your portfolio every month as per the monthly rebalancing logic. So let's quickly check out what has been the historical performance of the monthly rebalancing logic at the execution of the strategy being done using these zero allocation charge ULIPs. Now the monthly rebalancing strategy that I have been talking about, of course, is this two variable market timing logic that we discussed earlier in this video. As per this logic, as we discussed, I had proposed that we should be rebalancing our SIP portfolio on the first trading day of every month for a period of five years based on two market timing variables. First, rate of change of the Fed's balance sheet size and second, the prevailing P ratio of the Nifty 50 index. Now, for the purpose of illustration, I'll be doing the assessment of the historical performance of the strategy using zero allocation charge ULIPs offered by Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance Company. Now here again, I'm not trying to endorse Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance Company or trying to suggest that their schemes are by far the best in the industry. The only reason I have picked up Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance Company for the sake of this illustration is because A, I use their schemes for my personal investments and B, I like their schemes because in case of ULIP schemes of Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance Company, the zero allocation option is available as long as your investment amount is 20,000 rupees per month or more than that. In case of most of the other zero allocation plan ULIPs that I've come across in the market, the zero allocation option is available only if investment amount is significantly more than that. And here I want to appeal to all my viewers that in case you are aware of any zero allocation charge ULIPs where zero allocation charge option is available for investment size of less than 20,000 rupees per month, then please do share the details with me. I'll be very happy to review their historical performance and share my findings in a future video. So let's get on with the assessment of the historical performance of the two variable market timing logic using zero allocation 
allocation charge ULIPS of Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance Company. Now, as always, we'll start with the historical performance of a conventional five-year SIP in the Nifty because that serves as the benchmark. Now, this is the chart that depicts the historical performance of a conventional five-year SIP in the Nifty since January 2001. We saw this chart earlier in this video. We also saw this chart in part one of this series. Now, the schemes of Bajaj Alliance Life, Life Insurance Company that we are going to review were launched only in January 2010 and hence the historical performance of these schemes can be reviewed only for the period after January 2010. And if we have to do a like to like comparison, then we need to look at the historical performance of a conventional five year SIP in the Nifty also for the period from January 2010 onwards. And this is how the performance of a conventional five year SIP in the Nifty looks like for the period after January 2010. As you can see, the worst case performance remains the same negative 5.82 percent per annum even the median case performance also is roughly the same at, at about 12 percent per annum however the best case performance is now 19 and a half percent per annum which is significantly lower than the 45 percent per annum that was witnessed in case of the historical performance of the five-year sip in the nifty for the period January 2001 onwards and that is because the performance of the nifty in the run up to the global financial crisis of 2008 was truly unprecedented especially the performance of the nifty between November 2002 to November 2007 was so spectacular that this performance has yet to be repeated so far and that's why the best case outcome of a five year SIP in the nifty in the pre-2010 period is so spectacularly higher than the best case outcome for the period after 2010. So now we have the benchmark in place. This is the historical performance of a conventional five-year SIP in the Nifty for the period January 2010 onwards. Now let's see what has been the historical performance of a five-year SIP in the Nifty when the SIPs were timed basis the two variable market timing logic that we discussed a little while back. Now this is how the performance of a five-year SIP in the Nifty looks like when you incorporate market timing based on the two market timing variables that we discussed earlier, the prevailing P ratio of the Nifty and rate of change of the Fed's balance sheet size. Look at the best case and look at the worst case. The best case of the strategy improves from 19.46% per annum to 233 66 percent per annum but what is most impressive is that the worst case outcome of the strategy is now 6.75 percent per annum in case of a conventional five-year sip in the nifty it was negative 5.82 percent per annum so we are talking about more than a 12 percentage point improvement in the worst case outcome so a significant improvement in the downside protection even the median case outcome improves from 12.11 percent to 14.27 percent so that's the improvement of more than two percentage points now let's look at the historical performance of the two variable market timing logic when the logic is applied to zero allocation charge ulips offered by bajaj alliance life insurance company so this is how the historical performance of the strategy looks like when the strategy is applied to a large cap fund offered by bajaj alliance large cap uh, bajaj alliance life insurance company limited this large cap fund goes by the name of Bajaj Equity Growth Fund 2. As you can see, when the two variable logic is applied to this fund, we have the best case at 23.3% per annum. We have the worst case going up further to 8.63% per annum and the median case outcome also improving further to 16.43% per annum. The results are even more spectacular when you apply this logic to a mid cap fund of Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance Company instead of a large cap fund. So this is how the historical performance of a five year SIP looks like when you apply the two variable logic to a mid cap fund offered by Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance Company. This scheme goes by the name of Bajaj Mid Cap Accelerator Fund 2. I have not been able to mention the full name of the fund here because of space constraint, but look at the historical performance when you apply the logic to this particular fund. The best case so far has been 27.25% per annum. Worst case improves even further to 8.68% per annum. Look at the median case outcome, 19.43% per annum. Just imagine in case of a conventional five-year SIP in the Nifty, the median case outcome was just 12.11% per annum. By Just by 
applying a simple market timing logic based on two publicly available market timing parameters p ratio of the nifty and the fed's balance sheet size we have been able to push up the median case outcome of the strategy from 12.11 percent to 19.43 percent per annum so this is what you get when you do market timing using two market timing parameters p ratio of the nifty and rate of change of the fed's balance sheet size in case of our paying clients, we offer to them a proprietary investment strategy called the Alpha SIF strategy, where we do market timing based on not two, but as many as 15 market timing variables covering both domestic as well as global macro parameters. What are these global macro parameters that are part of the Alpha SIF logic? Well, some of these parameters I had discussed in this earlier video of mine that I had published on 6th of April 2024. In this video, I had discussed parameters such as the yield curve, the reverse repo facility and the Fed funds rate. These three are arguably the three most important market timing parameters that are part of our comprehensive market timing logic, the Alpha SIP strategy. And when you apply our comprehensive market timing logic, the Alpha SIP strategy comprising of more than 15 market timing variables to a highly rated zero allocation charge ULIP, this is what you get in terms of outcome. This is what you get in terms of the historical performance of a five-year SIP. This is the historical performance of a five-year SIP when the alpha SIP strategy logic is applied to the Bajaj Equity Growth Fund 2, which is a large cap fund. Look at the best case performance. The best case performance of the strategy would have been as high as 32.16% per annum. But more importantly, Look at the worst case outcome. Even in the worst case with this strategy, you would have ended up with a return of 16.79% per annum at the end of a five-year SIP. And mind you, you would have got this double-digit return if your SIP would have ended in April 2020. That is when the markets were at the bottom of the crash that was witnessed during the onset of the COVID pandemic. And even in that kind of a scenario, you would have been able to exit your five-year SIP with a return of 16.79% per, per annum. That's the kind of downside protection that this strategy ensures. And this is the historical performance of a five-year SIP when the Alpha SIP logic is applied to a highly rated mid-cap fund offered by Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance Company. This fund goes by the name of Bajaj Mid-Cap Accelerator Fund 2. Best case outcome of 37.87% per annum. Worst case outcome of 18.54% per annum. Median case outcome almost 30% per annum. Per annum. Now I have to have to have to reiterate with every grain of my existence once again that these numbers that I have presented out here merely represent the historical performance of these strategies. And even by a stretch that these numbers should not be considered as any kind of an indication much less any kind of an assurance that these kind of returns can necessarily be achieved in future as well. And I am not even saying this as part of giving you a routine disclaimer. I truly mean this. In this series itself, we saw how the P ratio of the Nifty, the price to earnings ratio of the Nifty never went above 29 since its inception all the way till 2020. But based on that, if you would have concluded that the P ratio of the Nifty can never go above 29 in future as well, then you would have been in for a very, very rude shock in the post-COVID era when the P ratio of the Nifty not just went above 29 and 30, it went all the way up to 42. What does that tell us about equity markets? It tells us that just because equity markets have behaved in a certain way in the past is no guarantee that they will continue to behave in the same way in future as well. This is what we have to keep in mind at all times, especially when we are trying to time our investments into the market basis, any market timing logic. This is the return that is generated for you by the alpha SIF strategy. Let's also understand how much of these returns are going to accrue to you after factoring in the various charges that are applicable in case of ULIP schemes. We saw earlier in the video that in case of ULIPs, there are three sets of charges that apply. Allocation charges, mortality charges and fund management charges. Let's understand what is going to be the impact of each of these, these three charges on your final returns. Let's deal with, deal with them one by one. First is allocation charges. Well, by definition, in case of zero allocation charge ULIPs, allocation charges do not apply. Allocation charges are zero. So, in case of zero allocation charge ULIPs, allocation charges will not dent your final returns any further. Second is mortality. I'll come to mortality in just a while. Let me deal with fund management charges before that. 
Fund management charges is something that has already been factored in the returns that I projected to you in the charts earlier. Because the returns that I showed you in the charts earlier were calculated based on the historical NAVs of these schemes and NAVs are declared by fund houses after factoring in fund management charges. So fund management charges are also included. Fund management charges are not going to dent your final returns any further from the returns that I showed you in the charts earlier. So out of these three, allocation and fund management charges are gone. They are not going to dent your returns. The only charge that is left is mortality charge. Mortality charge is what you pay for the insurance component of the ULIP scheme. Now, per se, I don't think this is an additional cost because against this, you also get an insurance cover, which is very, very critical. Like because of this insurance cover, if something happens to you during the course of your SIP investment, your dependents and beneficiaries are going to be fully protected. And that, in my view, is a very, very important security that you should have and you should additionally pay for that. But even if you believe that you are sufficiently insured and you do not want to pay additionally for any additional insurance cover, in that case, well, these mortality charges are going to bring down, is an additional cost for you and they are going to bring down your final return to a certain extent. But by how much? This chart depicts the approximate impact of mortality charges on your final return. And this chart depicts the historical performance of the Alpha SIP strategy when you apply the Alpha SIP strategy to Bajaj Alliance's large cap fund, which goes by the name of Bajaj Equity Growth Fund 2. We saw this chart a little while back. Now, when you look at these two charts in conjunction, how do you estimate what is the final return that is likely to accrue to you after factoring in mortality charges? Well, that is going to depend on what is your age. Let's say if your age is 35 years. Then in your case, the impact of mortality as per this chart is 0.56%. What does that mean? That means that if the strategy generates a return of let's say 22% for you, as per this chart, historically this strategy has produced a return of anywhere between 16.79% per annum to 32.16% per annum. Let's say in your case, you end up with 22% per annum return at the end of your 5-year SIP. If that is the case, then after factoring in mortality, you will end up with a return of 22% minus 0.56%, which comes to about 21.44%. This is going to be the final return that is likely to accrue to you after factoring in mortality charges and all the other charges. If your return is let's say 30%, then your final return is likely to be 30% minus 0.56%, which is 29.44%. If your age is let's say 40 years, then in your case, the impact of mortality as you can see is 0.81%. In your case, let's say if you end up with 22% return from the strategy at the end of your 5-year SIP, then the final return that will accrue to you after factoring uh, mortality charges is likely to be 22% minus 0.81%, which, which comes to 21.19%. So this is how you estimate the approximate return that is likely to accrue to you after factoring in mortality charges. In my view, zero allocation charge ULIPs are a complete no-brainer as long as your age is within 45 because up to the age of 45, as you can see, the impact of mortality, is, maximum impact of mortality is 1.31%. So if you are 45 years old and even if you end up with let's say the worst case return of the strategy historically which is 16.79% and even after factoring in the 1.31% mortality impact you are still likely to end up with a return of more than 15% and this is the worst case outcome. But what about those who are above the age of 45 and are still in interested in investing in zero allocation charge ULIPs? Well in case of those above the age of 45 mortality impact starts to become significantly higher as you can see in case of those who are 50 years old the impact of mortality is as high as 2.2%. But don't worry, there is a way to get around these mortality charges in case of those who are above the age of 45. In case of ULIPs, you do not necessarily have to keep yourself as the insured person in the policy. You can also have your spouse or even your children serve as the insured person in the policy. So let's say if you have a teenage son or a teenage daughter, you can nominate this child of yours to serve as your 
as the insured person in your policy and in that case the mortality charges would be calculated based on the age of your teenage son or daughter and as a result the mortality charges will automatically come down very very significantly. In fact this is exactly what we advise Mr. Govind to do. Remember Govind sir whose policy statement I showed you earlier in this video. Well, this is the statement of the policy that he invested through us. Let me tell you about the salient points about the policy that he invested in through us. And what are the key changes that we made in this policy? Well, this is a policy in which he'll be investing 12 lakh rupees per year for a period of five years. The first change we made was that we advised him to have his son as the insured person in the policy. His son's name is Gaurav. Gaurav was born in 1986. So he was in his late 30s at the time this policy was sold to Govind sir by us last year. I'll tell you the impact of this on the mortality charges applicable on this policy in just a while. But let me first deal with allocation charges. As I mentioned to you in this policy, Govind sir will be investing 12 lakh rupees per year for a period of 5 years. So the first investment of 12 lakh rupees came in in April 2023. Look at the allocation rate. 100%. What does that mean? 100% of this 12 lakh gets invested in his name. Out of 12 lakhs, nothing gets deducted. Everything gets invested. Now let's look at what is the quantum of mortality charges that apply in case of this policy. The mortality charges comes to 702 rupees per month. Mind you, this is a policy in which Govind sir is investing 12 lakh rupees per year. The insurance cover that comes with this policy is 10 times of 12 lakhs, which is 1.2 crores. Again, for a 1.2 crore cover, the mortality charges being applied is 702 rupees per month. In case of the earlier policy that was sold to him by his local agent in Delhi, the policy cover was just 20 lakh rupees and for that the mortality charges being deducted was more than 2000 rupees per month. So let's accumulate all these charges. So allocation charges zero in case of this policy. Mortality charges about 700 rupees per month. 700 into 12 comes to only 8400. You add GST on top of that, that's another 1500. Total charges only 9912 rupees in year one. Total amount of investment 12 lakh compared to the invested amount total charges comes to just 0.83 percent less than 1 percent of the investment amount is getting deducted in charges. In case of the earlier policy that I showed to you, you remember 20 percent of what he was investing was getting deducted towards charges. So this is what happens when you invest sensibly in the zero allocation charge ULIPS and you sensibly choose the insured person so as to keep the mortality charges to the bare minimum. Now coming to the part you will be most interested in how to make all these gains completely tax free. Well, before, but before that how are ULIPS otherwise taxed? Well in case of ULIPS there, are, there is no taxation that applies in the initial 5 year period when the ULIP is under a lock in. You get taxed only as and when you redeem after the initial lock-in period lapses. And taxation on ULIPS is the same as taxation on long-term equities, which is 12.5% tax on the gains. The first 1 lakh gain in a financial year is exempt. But is there a way to make all the gains that I showed you earlier in this video completely tax-free and not pay even the 12.5% long-term capital gains tax that applies in case of ULIPS at the end of 5 years? Well, there is a way. There is a tax provision according to which all gains generated from a ULIP policy is completely tax free as long as the cumulative investment that you have done across all ULIP policies in a year is within 2.5 lakh rupees. This is an exemption which is available exclusively for ULIPs. This is an exemption that is not available in case of mutual funds. I'm going to stress on this once again. This benefit is available to you only and only if your cumulative investments across all your ULIP, ULIP policies is within 2.5 lakh rupees per year. And when you look at the zero allocation charge ULIPs through the lens of this special tax provision for ULIPs, then the case for investing in zero allocation charge ULIPs becomes really, really compelling. Because this is the only instrument through which you can invest up to 2.5 lakhs and the maturity benefit is going to be completely tax-free. You must make the most out of this 
special tax provision that I just talked about and you must fully utilize this tax free allowance of 2.5 lakh rupees per annum that is available for investments only and only in ULIPs. If your investable surplus is within 2.5 lakh rupees per year which is approximately 20,000 rupees per month then I believe all your investments should first go into zero allocation charge ULIPs. Having said that, I'm not trying to suggest that you should be investing in these zero allocation charge ULIPs only for the purpose of exhausting your 2.5 lakh rupee tax-free allowance. The only thing that is going to change if your cumulative investments across all your ULIP policies exceeds 2.5 lakh rupees in a year, then you'll have to pay capital gains tax on the maturity proceeds but the rate of tax that applies in case of gains from ULIP policies is the same as rate of tax that applies in case of any other equity instrument such as mutual funds or direct stocks. In fact you are likely to be better off investing in zero allocation charge ULIPs compared to mutual funds and direct stocks even if your cumulative investments exceed 2.5 lakhs rupees in a year is because from a taxation standpoint ULIP ta ULIPs are subject to the same rate of tax as any other equity instrument but they continue to enjoy the benefits that I discussed earlier in this video which is that you can continue to rebalance your portfolio at monthly frequency as per the logic that I discussed earlier in this video without having to incur charges such as exit load and short term, short -term capital gains tax which would apply if you apply the same logic in case of mutual funds or direct stocks. But it goes without saying that you have to have to have to ensure that the investment is going only into a zero allocation charge ULIP because otherwise the entire tax benefit is going to be completely offset because of the allocation charges that ULIP companies would apply on your investment. But how can you be sure that the policy that you are investing in is a zero allocation charge ULIP? Well, for that you need to ask for what is called the BI sheet, the benefit illustration sheet of the ULIP policy being proposed to you. So anybody who comes to pitch a ULIP policy to you, you should ask for the BI sheet of the policy being proposed. BI sheet basically has a year wise breakup of all the charges that are going to be applicable in case of the policy being proposed to you. So for example, this is the BI sheet of a policy where you would invest 1.8 lakh rupees per year for five years. And then you can see that in case of this policy, Premium allocation charge of 4,500 rupees is going to be payable in the first year and 3,150 rupees of allocation charges are going to be payable in subsequent years. 4,500 on an investment of 1.8 lakh rupees. So, 2.5% gone in allocation charges upfront on day one. This is the red flag that I am talking about. Ideally, this column under allocation charges should all be zero. In this sheet, you can also see the other charges that are applicable on this policy. You can see the breakup of mortality charges that are going to be applicable year-wise. Then you can see this uh, additional column called policy admin charges. Now, this is something that you have to be, you have to be careful about. A lot of ULIP companies have started to slip in a lot of charges under the header of policy admin charges. Now, to be fair to them, in this case, the policy admin charges are not very substantial, about 400 rupees on an investment of 1.8 lakh rupees per year. So, that translates to about 0 0.15, 0 0.2%. That's something, ideally, it should be zero, but this is something that we can live with. But the moment policy admin charges are of the order of, let's say, half a percent or 1% of the investment amount, that's that's clearly a red flag. Now let's move to the BI sheet of a zero allocation charge ULIP. This is how the BI sheet of a zero allocation charge ULIP looks like. This is a policy in, in which you would be paying two and a half lakh rupees per year for a period of five years. Now look at the column under the header of premium allocation charges. All zeros against every year. So this is how your BI sheet lo should look like. No allocation charges. This is basically your way to ensure that there are no allocation charges and no other hidden charges. Yes, there is a small amount of policy admin charges being, being applied in case of this policy. Ideally, even this column should be all zeros. But the quantum of policy admin charges in case of this policy is about 400 rupees on an investment of about 2.5 lakh rupees per annum. So that translates to hardly around 0 0.5, 0 0.15 to 0.2%. That's something that we can live with. But the moment policy admin charges become of the order of 0.5% or 1% or more than that, that's something that you have to be careful about because that would be a red flag. Now we come to the next question which is how and from where we can buy and invest in a zero allocation charge ULIP. And this is going to be the most challenging part about investing in these ULIPs. The most challenging part is going to be to find an intermediary, find an agent who is prepared to sell you a zero allocation charge ULIPs. 
these ulips are so low on cost that the brokerage that ulip companies are able to pay for these zero allocation charge ulips is wafer thin it's a fraction of what they usually pay in case of traditional ulips and as a result most agents and banks are not prepared to sell these zero allocation charge ulips and that makes it very difficult for retail investors to find an intermediary who is prepared to sell them zero allocation charge ulips so how can you invest in these zero allocation charge ulips well you have to do your homework your best chance of being able to invest in a zero allocation charge ULIP is to go to the website of various leading ULIP companies and look for zero allocation charge plans. In fact, most ULIP companies usually prefer to sell their zero allocation plans only through their websites directly to the customers because when they sell through their website directly to the customer, they do not have to pay any brokerage to an intermediary. Your other alternative, of course, is to invest in zero allocation charge ULIPs through the platform that I manage, which goes by the name of metacaps.ai. As a matter of policy, we do not sell any traditional ULIPs. We only sell zero allocation charge ULIPs to our clients. My dear friends, this brings me to the end of this video and also to the end of this series. Many of you have asked me multiple times, what is it that we do at metacaps.ai, whose logo you can see running on my videos. Well, in this series, I attempted to explain what is it that we do at metacaps.ai, what is the problem that we are trying to solve for our clients. And the problem is how to generate good returns across market cycles, but with a very, very high downside protection. And in this series, I also tried to explain the solution that we offer to our clients, which is essentially how we introduce an element of timing into the investments which is critical for ensuring that our clients can end up with very good returns not just during times when markets are doing very well but they can end up with decent returns also during times when markets are going through a downturn my dear friends i hope you like the insights that i shared during the course of this video and during the course of this series as a whole if you did then please do like and share this video and please do consider subscribing to my channel Thank you very much.